What is up, down and sideways, you fantastic individuals? Welcome inside. It's Lee Gunn. I'm here with Mark with a few beauties to recap a little bit of crazy on the weekend. Some level ups from some uh, former world champions. And we went right into the Monday with games. Elimination matches. This new format's always crazy. You're barely a week into the event and teams are already being ousted. It, it, it's wild, but it's one of those ones where you realize we, we have played a considerable amount of games total type of situation. But yes, it is do or die time finally at Worlds Elimination on the line and step right up. Mad Lions Koi, take your seat alongside Gam getting ready for this first match. Yeah, we had, they kicked things off, but uh, we start with a little Team Liquid action because this is the America's preview. This is delivering on the hype of that build-up for the next league. But most importantly, it's North America avoiding embarrassment. And that's not to say there weren't some shaky moments throughout, some questionable barren for soul trades, some suspect smites on both sides of the rift in this series. But it's still Team Liquid doing just enough, despite maybe the worst day for impact that we've seen on the international stage. And that's where I want to start because this is a player that a lot of people had their eyes on heading towards this tournament after the incredible year that he put up in the LCS, you know, uh, arguably in my in my opinion, the best year that he has had since coming over to the LCS, which again, we've had some pretty spectacular, pretty successful years for impact in the LCS. To have this bad of a performance internationally is a concern, is a worry for me, and it needs to change around if Team Liquid's going to continue to survive at this event. It was enough on the day, thanks to, you know, performances by Jan, APA coming through, Core JJ as well. Uh, I want to bring them up in this series that gets pain, what they were able to do. But yeah, big zero on the impact in the top side. I've, I've never seen him look as brutal on NAR as I think he was in this game. I, 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 did he even get a NAR ulti? Every time he was TPing, he had zero on the rage bar. Multiple times he was dying before he even got to Mega NAR, getting caught out in the side lane. And this is a meta that you think he would thrive in. You know, he's one of the best, smartest players in terms of when there is lane swaps going around. But yeah, we've seen it really this whole tournament. Even when he's on something like a Jax, the split push game just has not been there for Team Liquid. But uh, yeah, absolutely bailed out by a mega performance in both games from Yon in this series. Yes, and this is where you can kind of you know, balance out the bitterness of the performance from Impact with some sweetness from your man Jan stepping up and delivering like this. Again, one of these players, we keep track of the progression, the growth that we have seen from him with this Team Liquid roster. This was an event where you wanted, again, another level up, another step forth, another show of power of where you've grown as a player. This is a very big series for Jan. One of the first times I think that we can really talk about and, and, and mention him stepping up on the international stage to take that big lead for the team. And uh, obviously, it's only pain gaming, but hopefully this will get a little bit of confidence for Team Liquid uh, going forward to the next round that they didn't. They could have easily lost, uh, especially that second game, uh, but they were able to get things back on track, finally get on the same page. And you heard there was a clip of Spawn. I think he was talking to Core JJ after this match, just saying, we're missing skill shots. We're flashing into walls. The next three days that we have off, you guys just need to be playing the game constantly because these are micro bad decisions, or not even decisions, just straight up micro misplays that we saw even going before this series. It's, it's one of these situations where it's not about, okay, we need to individually go on this, 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 and this. It is just a back to basics, refresh, rezone in on how you play the game, how you get comfortable, all these types of things to be able to execute just like you do any other solo queue game type of situation is what you want to be able to get those mistakes coming through on the main stage for Team Liquid. Played a factor as well today, not enough that it was is going to sink this team, but certainly one thing that again we are keeping track of and need to have, see that improvement as you move into that next round. Yeah, it's tricky because when you are suffering 
uh, in those regards of gameplay. It's almost, I feel like sometimes it's better to not play the game at all for like a 24 hour, 48 hour stretch. Obviously there's huge crunch time uh, during Worlds, but we'll see how the next couple of days go for Team Liquid. Got to wrap up Pain Gaming's run now at the tournament as a whole because I think they well exceeded expectations. Even getting to the main stage, being competitive against some of these major region teams, I think Maybe the gap between the CB Lull and the LCS is not going to be as big as we initially thought when we headed to that new format next year. When it's just looking better and better, that new format, that new setup of what we're going to get, the type of drama, the type of rivalries that can build out of it. Yes, that's what we've been thinking about this one. Pink Gaming has been a very good ambassador to showcase that throughout this event. Uh, you know, still obviously some struggles, still obviously lacking in, in, in areas of power where you're comparing against more of these main stage, Swiss stage type of group teams, but absolutely a good level up, good exposure for them. And I cannot wait until we get the dance, get the tango with the LLA and the CB Law for the Americas. Yeah, we'll see what level the rest of the Brazilian teams are whoever, whatever, tier two, LLA, whenever they all come together. In 2025, Team Liquid avoided disaster. Now, MDK opening up for the day, and there's no question, GAM is a stronger team than Pain Gaming, but MDK, especially after how dominant they looked in game one, I was already, I'm sorry, I was getting excited to see this version of Mad Lions, but then to lose uh, in game three in the fashion that they did. You heard multiple people on the cast saying this draft is so heavily favored for MDK. They just have to not, I don't know, somehow get behind in the laning phase. They opt for a lane swap and get completely crushed in the 2v4 dive. And the game was over from there. And I'm going to call it out like, you know, flat out in one of these ones. This is the worst nightmare that we were always picturing when we were concerned about this experiment, about this run with the Mad Lions, betting everything on El Yoya being your veteran star rock of the team and the rookies around him. You had these concerns when you got to one of these type of moments, this type of situation where it is pressure, where it is about your mental fortitude. How strong are you to stay in a series, to stay in a game? And you saw game two, game three, complete mental boom from these Mad Lions, from El Yoya incredibly disappointing to see that this is the way that things ended up and you know usually you let yone go over to somebody and that's an l but frescao he did not have a good performance on it that's putting it lightly and ever since mirwin had that amazing 1v4 outplay against blg in game one he's been invisible this whole tournament yes and that has been an absolute almost you know not really a shocker to some people been pretty shocking to me to see that that was where we started things out and kind of where you felt okay well you can take this little nugget away from obviously what was going to be the loss to blg and you know store it and use it to power yourself up or find a way an angle in a later series later match never came through individually from him never came through for these mad lines and it's, it's one of those ones where he's looked so out of his depth i don't want to you know pile in on the dog pile that's going to be on for scowy already but yes that was about as balanced as you're going to see Yone look at this tournament right now in, in those hands and some of these blind ultimates, frankly, that were coming on through into these team fights. It was a disappointing one, and it plays perfectly into the strategy of, okay, well, yeah, you're not going to do anything on that. How about, you know, that, that, that Ari with Grasp? Oh, yeah, we'd like to use that the next game. Yeah, I mean, it does feel extra bad that it goes the other way and Emo looks pretty good on the Ari in that Yone uh, matchup, but... I mean, I know expectations weren't super high for Mad Lions. People were pleasantly surprised when they kind of dominated their way through the play-in stage. But now, such a quick exit, and the fact that it's at the hands of GAM, PSG giving them a loss, BLG the only Tier 1 region that they lost to, that's what really stings with this loss. It, it stings, and it was quite clear on the side of GAM what they had and what the Mad Lion Koi don't have is a leader, is someone stepping up. And we've had various moments of talking about El Yoya and, you know, maybe this is it. And, yes, he's taking that step and he's showing. But at the end of the day, when it came down to one of these series, when you do need to dig deep, find that type of motivation, nothing there. All silence on the side of the Mad Lions Koi, just frustration, you know, pity, you know anger toxicity you know soft pouting all these things and then you go over to gam 
boys are laughing. Boys are having a great time out there on the rift. That is one of the differences, I think, is that you can go into the mentality of this series. And that extends throughout a lot of the disappointing moments we've seen from these Mad Lions. Yeah, and it's, you know, sometimes little things. Even after the game one loss, Levi went down the line to pretty much every guy on the team, kind of patted their shoulder, you know, said, it's all good, we'll bounce back. And then, of course, doing the same after their winning game. So that's just the presence that he brings. Obviously, you know, popping off on the Wukong in game two also <laughs> helps. But the positive side of things is still the mainstay the main ingredient for Gam. Levi has an amazing game too, and it's more of Kiaya absolutely smurfing on the Aurora in game three. Oh, baby, the Aurora, that is one of those other ones where again, hey, give over the Yona, give over whatever you want because we are getting the power pick. We are getting the power pick and someone that knows how to utilize it as well has been one of the big things I think we have seen from this because we've seen Aurora come through and yes, we know she is busted. We know the power is there, it hasn't been utilized. It hasn't been able to be put through into these team fights. You always, always are able to see that in the coordination that Kiaya has with the rest of the GAM squad. Very impressed by this. And I think that this is one of those ones where there's equal sides of the disappointment for the Mad Lions Koi and equal amounts of hype, excitement, and validation for the VCS and for a squad like GAM. Second year in a row, they knock out a Western team from the Swiss stage and do it in i know it took three games but convincing fashion when you look at that third game there was really not much fight back out of mdk so absolutely the respect is deserved to be on gam they've earned it through play-ins and now obviously with the win here against mdk and now of course it sets the stage for an iconic rematch from last year team liquid Dodging a lot of landmines in that one and two bracket. Uh, the main one, of course, being BLG. But they get the matchup against Gam, where they will be favorites. But after this series, I'd still be nervous as an NA fan. There, there is there, there just is not a history, a path, of a world, an iteration that you can tell me that Team Liquid did not get any more, any luckier than this one is to get Gam in this matchup. Uh, th this is what you only could hope for uh, type of thing, but you do need to be careful what you wish for because this is not a GAM team that you are going to be able to overlook. Again, just what we talked about. Levi and Kiaya, that top jungle, the synergy that they have, are coming fresh off of, again, bad tournament and even worse performance in the next in that series from uh, Impact. That's my question mark. My big circle looking at this one for this this matchup is going to be how can you level up how can you step up because we've seen this before we've seen impact versus kiaya and we've seen impact hold his own we've seen impact be able to get advantages as well but this that was an impact that was at various levels you know a, a fluctuation of performance and stability that was higher than what we have seen from this event not higher than what we have seen from him this year though that's going to be my big question heading into it which one of the versions of impact is able to step into the ring for team yeah, yeah, and if, if he's just miraculously in MVP form again three days later, then, I mean, kudos to the mental state of that guy, but they're going to need a level up out of him in that GAM matchup. How did BLG get to 1-2? and two? Well, there was uh, some bangers of the 1-1 one one matchups over the weekend. Obviously, first and foremost, was that T1 BLG throwdown, and we've been waiting for it. 90% of the year is irrelevant. Doesn't matter if T1 is slumping for months. When Worlds hits, this team just comes up different. And this was the statement win of the tournament so far for them against BLG because they looked in peak form. Case in point was this 4v5 around Baron after Faker gets caught out and they're able to miraculously turn it into a team fight win. That is the T1 that we have been missing. The T1 that the other four members are able to carry, are able to be so spectacular. And then you can add in Faker to any type of situation. Then you have situations where Faker isn't there. He's dead. He's whatever on the map. The other four need to find a way to step up and make those plays. That is the championship caliber of T1. Side in this BLG series, yes, laying it out. How does a squad like BLG get to one and two? Well, T1 is the other side of that matchup, of that coin, to get themselves ahead of it. This was a great series. One of the ones that I want to mention from the four members other than Faker on T1 that we're, we're highlighting here is Owner and Kyria. I think these are both guys that have had their struggles throughout T1 struggles this year and how things have fluctuated. 
for them, this was much more like a championship owner type of performance that you can bet on. And the huge, huge game-breaking plays from Kyria, these team fights, these mega engages, finding them all, that was the Stoss that was missing. I think that he was someone that looked a little bit lost in the weeds as T1 was struggling, floundering in this LCK. Now we are seeing those big time plays, the big moments, and the synergy with the rest of the team. It's absolutely there. And this was winning a game against Jax, and not just anyone's Jax. BLG Bin's Jax, who got crazy fed early on and looked like he was going to be an absolute menace, but T1's able to dance around him, pick him out in some of these fights, and come away with a huge win. Yeah, the fact that BLG's 1-2 and two is not even really, they've looked bad. Like, it's not like they're necessarily underperforming. LNG and T1 just both played incredibly in those matchups. For every side of the coin, for every time we're saying, oh, blessed, this is as good as it can get for the West, the draws that we've gotten, there's the other side. Look at BLG. You skip over out of that Mad Lions Koi matchup. Yeah, would you like the schedule that BLG has had to face down to try and prove themselves? Yeah, after that first round, it doesn't really matter if you're the first seed anymore. It becomes uh, pretty randomized. Uh, the other squad that had a big level up was G2 esports nothing about it was clean but no wins from g2 were ever clean especially matching up against weibo this was the first win by a western team against an eastern tier one squad and it was all thanks to that galio top lane pick for broken blade who has been the best most consistent player for g2 this tournament and that if you want to bet on G2, that's a pretty darn good sign because it hasn't been that the rest of G2 is not functioning, is not contributing or operating out there on the rip. It is that BB is taking that next step. And that is one of these ones that you've always checked in with with G2 because you know when the chips are down, when it matters the most, Caps will be there for you. You got that one. You need someone else to be at that type of level or even close to it to give you something else in these series. Broken Blade so far has been able to be that for this G2 coming through with that Galio pick. And man, is the ultimates, the, the taunting, the way that everything is able to work out with him in those team fights, it worked out wonderful for G2. And really, you're feeling extra good because this was not a great game for Caps, honestly. Uh, you know, especially to the level he's been for the most of 2024. This was a down game from him and you're still coming away with the win want to shout out also han sama stepped up in this game and he has been right up there with broken blade in terms of consistency so far in this tournament yeah i'm not ready to go overboard with han sama i want to be careful with the hype and the expectations for him and what he's able to deliver uh for this team right now but yes it is a step up it is one of these ones where you're eyeing him as kind of an outlier a little dark horse little star that you can put into the g2 category when you start stacking up against the rest of these teams left at the event and what is going to be necessary to carve yourself out of spot in that top eight. And uh, it's going to be necessary to an even higher level next up because we get the annual G2 versus T1 showdown at an international event. I feel like this is like three straight years we've had this matchup at some point and this time we'll be treated to a best of three. Oh, yes, sir. We are getting this one once again. The familiar, the housemates, it appears. T1 and G2 shooting content together and everything. This is going to be a brawl. I cannot wait for this one, seeing the level up that we've gotten from T1, the stable position that we expect G2 to be at. This seems like a tango and a legitimate one for one of these top eight spots uh, to lock yourself in for the event. Who you got? Who you got really is going to be the big question on a lot of people's mind. Uh, the other one and one level up or well played goes to FlyQuest matching up against PSG. FlyQuest now two and one. BLG's one and two. FlyQuest better than BLG confirmed. That's it, right? <laughs> Done. It, it's it, it at least it was a good enough series and, and clean enough from FlyQuest that you can e kind of ease away and put away the box of MSI shame and disappointment. You can kind of store that one. Maybe they'll come out another year for an NA team. Who knows? Probably will. But FlyQuest, on through. Getting that win, making sure that everything is staying alive. I think you still see a lot of the positives that we talked about with this team inspired what he's able to do in the jungle, how he can facilitate, how he can lead. Ivor's permaband against them now, right? It better be. You're wild if you're leaving that one up at this point, seeing the utility that he's been able to provide. And a big part of that as well, 
Masu delivering down in the bottom lane. Yes, he is stepping up. Remember when we're talking about, you know, the beatdowns that he got at MSI, and he's like, look, I know it's not good and all the blah, but I got to find a way to take lessons from this. Take something positive and turn it into an even more of a win later on for me. That's what you're seeing. That's the comfort. That's the experience that you're seeing to be able to take over, to take it to that next level. He is doing it at this event. My man, you know, we got to get him a even bigger spot in the world's video next year at this pace. I, I, I don't think, you know, the quadra kill he gets in this game is crazy. And then the final team fight. I don't think enough people are talking about the cleanse and the way this guy plays that final fight. This is a, I think it was basically two frames that he is stunned by the rail before he instant captain Jack cleanses it, plays the rest of that team fight so cleanly. He's the nicest, most humble dude. But I love seeing guys pop in Zanya's mid-auto to get the quadra. Masu's feeling it, and he should be at this event so far. Which is fantastic for this FlyQuest team because it provides you that extra angle, especially when you got players that are as creative, as willing to do different things, change things up, like Whippo, like Inspired. Different things, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know that these are guys that can absolutely take that seat back and say, okay, I know my role within this team, within this operation for this game. I just got to get this, this, and this, elevate this guy, and we're off to the races as long as he executes. Masu, the way that he has played, that confidence that he is showing, the rest of his teammates should have that confidence in him to be one of those options to be a win condition in these series. And luckily now for them, at least, they won't have that uh, favorite title in their next matchup obviously going to be absolutely massive underdogs against humble life yes and i think it's one of these ones where again you got to get creative you're going to have to find something different something uh, special to get over this hump that is Hanwha life from what we have seen from them how prepared they are how sharp they can be at this event gonna have to prepare something for that and uh, i think a, bit, a big one for me is instantly starting with no yone and possibly the smolder let's keep an eye on that one folks yeah i think flyquest gonna watch those genji hanwa life vods and just go Ugh. <laughs> even though they lost this series i'm pretty terrified of this matchup but we'll do a full preview of the next round of action on the next episode but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beauties thanks for hanging out and we will catch you on that flippity flip